Hey guys, so as usual, I thought I'd bring a tier list by the data, but for rogue decks in particular, using dual milk data from YGScope.com, as well as some YCS data from YCS Peru that happened recently, and if you want to know how the calculation is done in terms of the score, you can always check my older videos. And before we continue, big thanks to my sponsors as always, if you want some Yu-Gi-Oh supplies, you can certainly use my code in the description below for discounts. So before we move on, now this was what my overall meta tier list by the data looked like that I posted recently, and so basically for this video, I'll only be focusing on decks that are in the rogue and other sections as well as more uh, decks of course, uh, but I am considering Eldritch and Marinsis as rogue as part of this video. Now of course there are some data quality issues with YGOScope still, but it does identify most decks now, at least the relevant ones, but some that are still missing uh, include something like Rika, as well as Evil Eye, which has been getting some attention lately, and I did actually recently do a deck profile with a high rated Evil Eye player, so definitely go check that out. Uh, Spring Ends and Scare Claw and Ninjas, also some hype rogue uh, options, so unfortunately they will not be part of this video. And so if we just continue with that rogue tier list for this month, we actually have Dark World as number one. Uh, in a way, maybe a little surprising, it does have some regional tops and I did do a, a kind of a cost analysis of some of the rogue and tier two options and this is one of the best ones. Now it does have a, a pretty decent win percentage, 52%. And it was actually played a lot on Dueling Book among all players and that's why I think on the tier score calculation side of things, it became number one, even though it did not actually top a YCS at Peru at least. Uh, but all in all, you know, uh, it can be a pretty strong deck. Admittedly, it's really not fun playing against this deck. Like, really, if you don't have hand traps, you're kind of just sitting there watching and just watching them solitary by themselves. Uh, so, you know what? If that's a playstyle for you, go for it. But certainly not for everyone. Uh, and then we, of course, have Dragon Link, which, uh, you know, it's kind of weird seeing this in the rogue territory now. It used to be tier 1 or at least tier 2 for such a long time. Uh, but, you know what? It's still solid. As you can see, 56% win percentage. Really, really good. And there's always, of course, uh, some of those hardcore Dragon Link fans out there. And you know what? Sooner or later, this deck will become meta again. You just know it. Konami loves dragons. So just, uh, if you're patient with this deck, you know, it's always been a great investment. Uh, and then we have Plunder Patrol, which actually topped YCS Peru, but with the, uh, I believe, Runic cards instead of the Adventure Package, which this uh, deck has been sort of known to play with ever since the release of that package a couple of years ago. Uh, so online, it's still seeing a decent amount of play, and win percentage 54%. Again, for any rogue deck, if you can hit 50%, it's actually usually pretty solid and respectable. Uh, and who knows, I think maybe with that YCS representation, maybe there will be more enthusiasts for Pl Plunder Patrol. It does have a pretty unique play style uh, in terms of equi equipping themselves to ships, and Konami has shown that they're still willing to support it. I think it's gotten at least two waves of support since the initial uh, release of this archetype. Uh, and so, you know what, it's cool to see, and who knows, we'll probably get more ships moving forward. Uh, and then we have Sky Striker, which is kind of funny how, you know what, no matter what the format, this deck will always see a lot of play online at least. Uh, unfortunately, it did not seem to have topped YCS Peru, but you know what, I think it's uh, the chances are there. I mean, you had decks like Salamangrade and Eldritch top YCS Peru, uh, and so who knows, maybe some other YCS Sky Striker will uh, sneak in there, and it is in a pretty decent spot, honestly, like better than what it was in the tier format, uh, and especially with something like Triple Thrust. Uh, in the mix and allowing you to search that engage or whatever other power spell or trap as this is a going second deck at least main deck wise uh, you know what it's not too bad and of course something like debrayer really does not affect sky striker at all and that's played a lot although unfortunately something like eradicator epidemic virus uh, will certainly hit this deck a lot Moving on to what I call tier B, we have Fluandries, which actually also topped YCS Peru. So you know what, the deck is still hanging on despite the wind barrier ban. Uh, you know, it's also very normal summon reliant, which uh, for the most part can get around with a lot of kind of floodgatey uh, sort of effects that usually hang around uh, in any format really. But you know what, it's uh, I'm not sure how cheap of a deck it is just because you do want to play Prosperity to be optimized, but you can always play Extravagance. I'm not sure if Advent has gone down since the wind barrier ban, but presumably it's probably cheaper to play than it was last format. Uh, we then have Drytron, which unfortunately also did not get that YCS top at Peru, at least, at least I don't believe. Uh, but online, you know what? It's always, uh, usually does pretty well. 58%, that's really high actually. Uh, I'm not sure what the sample size was for this one, but you know what? You have a pretty decent amount of Drytron players. It's a pretty big brain deck, a lot of combo lines, and you know what? I think nowadays they're probably ending on uh, Vanity's Ruler, which is pretty crazy. Uh, I think they also play Chaos Max. I don't know if it's one or the other, or they play both. Uh, but you know what? All in all has some kind of like lockish, floodgate-ish uh, things that they end on now. Uh, used to have that sort of turn skip Drytron. Th I'm not sure if that's a thing anymore. Uh, so <laughs> unfortunately, Drytron's uh, sort of win condition uh, a lot of times has been uh, pretty uh, not fun to play against. 
Uh, we then have Hero, which sadly has been going down and down uh, in terms of play compared to, let's say, even the last couple of formats. But you know what? Uh, fortunate for Hero players, Konami seems to always release support for them. They did recently get a new one in uh, Maze of Memories, the uh, whatever fusion card. Uh, really, really cool to see that they just continue to get support, and I think it's it's definitely for sure playable. Uh, and it's also a deck that can actually utilize Eradicator, for example. So, you know, against Branded, that's pretty hard, uh, hardcore. Uh, not to mention Dark Angel, you know, preventing those spell effects. Also really good against Branded, at least, and a lot of other decks, too. So, uh, it's really cool. I guess also giving Dark Angel to a cashier player, uh, that would get kind of annoying for them, too, especially now that they control the monster. Uh, so, all in all, it's got some cool uh, gimmicks in the deck. And then we have Marincess, which is certainly cool to see. Now, despite that YCS top, and I believe back-to-back -back YCS tops, all from the same player, Shannon, uh, unfortunately, in terms of tier score calculation, I guess it didn't score that high, just because it's not seeing that much play online among all players on Dueling Book. But nonetheless, it's clearly a really good deck under the right pilot, and can still hang in there. I mean, it hung in there during uh, tier format, in a way, I believe, uh, because, I, for example, I did do that deck profile with that high rank. Uh, Marinza's player and he was still able to use for example the Shizu cards to really combat tiers in that format and so it's you know clearly pretty adaptable and a really cool deck. Uh, and then we have Punk which unfortunately I believe did not top at YCS Peru but it's been getting a lot of play uh, the last couple uh, formats uh, in terms of as a fun rogue synchro strategy. I think there's a variety of different ways to play Punk you know with Therion or whatever else there might be uh, but you know what pretty cool Psychic and Punisher is pretty pretty strong and kind of hard to out for a lot of decks. Uh, and then speaking of Salad, uh, it did top YCS Peru, which is really cool to see. I think it had the Adventure Engine, uh, and I think that's how it's been played, at least among the high-rated players on Dueling Book as well. Uh, you know, Salad, unfortunately, win percentage-wise, 47% is kind of low, uh, but you know what? Clearly, under the right pilot, you can uh, do well even now, uh, and it's kind of hard to believe that at one point, this was like such a dominant deck, winning like most of the Nationals, I believe, in 2019. Uh, but who knows? Maybe it'll get back to that level someday. And then we have Elich, which again uh, is another deck that topped the YCS, uh, which was a bit of a surprise too. But I guess, you know what, it's a good time for trap decks in a way. Uh, and it's, you know, clearly shown with something like Labyrinth, you know, and trap tricks, uh, they can uh, thrive. And so win percentage wise, 51%, pretty solid. I'm really surprised that among all decks, it's actually not played that much anymore. Eldritch traditionally has been played quite a lot online. You know, it's an easy deck to play. It's a deck that you can splash in on a lot of different decks as an engine. For example, I played Invoked Eldritch for quite a bit. And so, you know what? Uh, unfortunately, I guess in terms of popularity, it's certainly dwindled down. Uh, but it's, I guess, a playable deck. But of course, there are better trap decks out there. Then we have what was just categorized as Red Eyes. I guess it's just sort of like Dragoon Turbo decks. This actually kind of saw a decent amount of play back in tier format as well, because Dragoon was also sort of good during that format too, uh, particularly against tiers. Uh, and so now with Branded playing Dragoon for the most part, uh, because it's such a strong uh, combat against Kashira in terms of a, not being able to be targeted, but just that also pop and burn, at least one burn, because uh, you are probably playing that Dark Magician uh, really strong, and usually if you see like Dragoon Turbo decks, it's just something with, for example, just uh, a whole bunch of Floodgates with Dragoon, uh, through Red Eyes Fusion actually, instead of Branded Fusion, and so, you know, with Necro Valley, for example, in last format, that was really strong. Uh, in this format, who knows, I guess it's still in there. Then we have Tri Brigade, uh, which unfortunately, of course, has seen a lot of decline in play since the last format. I mean, now, I guess with Keshira, I mean, Arizard, it is kind of hard, but like, I mean, you know, we've always had some kind of deck that will just banish everything, and Tri Brigade has always survived that. And so I think Tri Brigade Sprite is still a thing as well. I'm not sure what the best version is. Tri Brigade Scare Claw is probably also a playable option as well, but unfortunately, not doing too well in terms of win percentage, and also another deck that at one point was the most dominant deck in our format. Uh, and then we have Dinosaurs, which, you know what, while it's always been in the rogue territory, and Dino players might be sad about that, that it's not a tier 1 deck anymore, but you know what, at least it's hung in there as a rogue option for all this time. You can't say that about a lot of decks. Some decks just completely, you know, some other rogue options, I mean, uh, just completely uh, evaporate, just something like Cyber Dragons, for example, where it pretty much sees almost no play now, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but you know what, Dinos, you're also getting some new support uh, soon, I believe. I'm not actually sure what set it's coming out, someone comment down below, uh, but you know, it, it looks really interesting and really cool to see. And then we have Ad Ignister, which, you know, it always has a high win percentage, so whoever plays this deck, like, you know, they're clearly really hardcore fans and really good with the deck, so uh, really cool to see. Uh, I think someone commented on one of my older uh, meta tier list videos, where is Ignister? Well, here it is, you know what, it's still hanging in there, uh, still a good deck, and of course, someone like Vision on Dueling Book, always rated high rated with that. 
Uh, and then we also have Dogmatica. So this is certainly declining play since the last time I did that rogue tier list by the data video. Uh, I actually did a recent deck profile with uh, SVNMS who was high rated. I'm not sure about now, but he was high rated with Dogmatica and he was playing it as a going second kind of board breaking kind of build. And it's really interesting, you know, and sort of anti-meta strategy, ripping extra deck monsters and all. Uh, really cool to see that as pure version, it's actually playable now. Unlike before, it was really just played as Dogmatica invoked. So, you know, uh, something worth checking out in terms of that deck profile. Uh, and then we have Alter guys. so I actually also recently did a deck profile with this, uh, Charles, uh, so you know what, again, trap decks, maybe it's the best time for them, uh, in quite some time, and um, being able to just you know, play certain floodgates and just, you know what, Alter guys, same perm combo, one of the best uh, two card combos probably in existence, and so uh, interesting to see an old deck like this still uh, hanging in there, although of course not nearly at the same level as it was a few years ago. Uh, and then we have Generator, which is really cool as well. Uh, recently got some new support, uh, so I guess this is at least the second wave of new support since the, the archetype first came out back, I believe, also in 2019. Uh, the field spell is really interesting. One of the more unique ones out there in terms of summoning uh, all the tokens. And you know what? This is one of the few decks where you could probably nibiru them on your own turn just because they summon so much. Uh, it has some cool interactions with like negates, but honestly in a format where a lot of people are main decking or at least playing evenly matched, I think it's uh, kind of hard to play this deck because you do control tokens and you're gonna have to just banish everything but the tokens. Uh, and then finally on to what we call the D tier. We have Madolce, sadly it doesn't see as much play as before, such as in tier format where it sort of had a decent matchup because of the grave shuffling effect and it was also Earth with the Vernasylph cards could play those grave shufflers and uh, really just uh, split them out on will. Uh, but unfortunately nowadays not played as much, but there's of course again another deck with some of those hardcore lovers out there. Uh, really cool artwork as well. I uh, really like this deck. I did do a profile with Ryan Yu uh, where he explains a lot of these cards in detail. And so you know what, if you love Rogue decks, this is certainly an option as well. And then lastly, we have DDD, uh, of course. Uh, unfortunately, win percentage-wise, 45%, not too, too high. Uh, really has fallen down hard since that one YCS where it got a couple tops because of that new support. I'm not quite sure how the deck is like now uh, since that format. Uh, for those of you that play DDD, uh, certainly let me know how you feel like it uh, performs in this current format. But as a rogue option, you know, it might be a little bit hard to recommend just because it's usually known as a very complicated deck. I believe with the new support that it got with the Griffin and everything, it, it made the combo lines a little bit more streamlined but still uh, maybe if you're looking for a new rogue option uh, you could start with something that's a little bit simpler to play uh, but that's just uh, my opinion so anyways that was it for the rogue tier list uh, for this month uh, hope that was helpful in helping you decide uh, what rogue deck to pick up next uh, and as always of course a big thanks to my patrons as always I really appreciate the support and well take care guys